Prior to arriving, I had absolutely no idea what to expect um, other than a couple of photos that I'd seen of um, some really pretty, beautiful, uh, dark, scaly carp. Um, so I didn't really have any preconceptions. Um, I've been super busy over the last couple of weeks, so I hadn't really had a chance to kind of do any prep or, or even really think about it too much, actually. So it was really nice, in a way, just to arrive kind of cold, almost. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful lake. Um, big bays of, of uh, you know, kind of reed-lined, weedy shallows. So you've got weed to the top all out here. You see little spots blowing out in the weed and things everywhere. I mean, really, it looks like uh, a kind of a perfect carp venue in, in lots of respects. Um, fish tenting in the weed, little bits of fins and that just poking out and glistening in the sun this afternoon. Just look gorgeous, um, absolutely beautiful really. I uh, was just super excited to, you know, to get out in the boat and have a look and, um, and think about getting some rods out. Got down sort of early morning or mid early morning. Beat Gaz to it really. Try and get the best swim, but don't tell him that. <laughs> uh, what a beautiful, magical place it is. Loads of carp about as well. Straight away we could see him in the weed close in. It's a real clear pit, very weedy, and you can see the bottom all over pretty much. Yes, yeah, so I had a say a little mooch around, found some lovely old zones. <laughs> Loads of little holes in amongst the weed just looked lovely really. Um, one particular area, there's a lot of fish holding up and probably in the like, real thick weed which is right behind me and a lot of the spots were really milked up, cloudy, so they've obviously been feeding there that sort of that morning. So yeah, I opted to uh, <laughs> go get as close to him as possible and yeah, I found a nice lovely like, shallow zone and it just drops off in front of it to about five foot. So yeah, got two rigs on that, got a bit of bait around it and see what happens during the night and early hours in the morning. After having a little look and a chat with Marcus, Marcus obviously had nicked the best swim because he arrived first, of course, like he does. Um, no, I'm only joking. Um, but that, that did look like a good spot, admittedly. Um, there was clearly fish sort of all in the, in the weed and in this bay um, between us. This is this looked like the kind of next best interception point, really. From what I can gather, this the bay to the right of me looks um, pretty shallow, um, really weedy. Obviously, a lot of fish in it. Um, hopefully, they're going to come out um, this evening as the um, you know as the temperature and the light starts to drop. Uh, they're going to drop out into the deeper water. You can see there's a sort of point in front of me, the weed where it's on the top, and then it sort of drops away um, into the slightly deeper water. So, yeah, went out. Had a, had a good look. Um, the visibility was, I wasn't expecting it to be quite as good because it's setting up quite late really, but surprisingly actually it was beautiful. The wind had dropped um, and you could see everything really. Uh, spots look gorgeous, some beautiful little polished gravelly spots out there, tucked in kind of horseshoes and things in the weed. Um, I mean, it, you know, absolute dream really. Uh, so there was half a dozen, um, so I just had a little look trying to sort of trying to decide which one looked like the best sort of interception point you've almost got a bit of a kind of deeper road that sort of runs through into this this sort of little kind of sort of bay uh, in the weed in front of me um, didn't really want to fish sort of too long because I just knew that would cause problems and that with the weeds so I've kind of tucked them sort of just inside the entrance really um, so hopefully um, yeah hopefully if any come through there then might have a chance. I've seen a couple just in, in the weed beyond the spots in the last half an hour or so, so yeah, it's looking good. As the evening drew in around us, Marcus and I were excited about what the night might bring. However, as dawn broke over the Cambridgeshire countryside, our bobbins were yet to move. A little way down the road though, it had been a momentous morning for Luke Stevenson, who'd bagged his target fish, Colin, from St Ives Shallow Lagoon. The camera crew headed off to film it and share in the buzz, and we were left to ponder our next move. Fifty-one. Six, fifty one four.
It was afternoon by the time the crew returned, and we'd been busy in the meantime. Marcus and I had skipped the rods in and headed off to find some fish, taken to the boat to check out some new areas. Being able to go float was such an edge, and we quickly identified some promising areas in amongst the dense beds of weed that grew so well in the rich, clear waters of the pit. It seemed, however, that the carp were lying low, conspicuous by their absence, and with a stunning August day now in full swing, we had an inkling where they might have headed to. So swapping the boat for waders, we set off for the shallows, where we were hopeful we'd find the carp sunning themselves. Despite looking high and low in the scorching sun and searching every nook and cranny, it soon became clear that the carp weren't present in the numbers we'd hoped. In fact, if anything, we now seem to be one step behind them. One thing was for certain, I needed to move. I hadn't seen any carp in the area I'd first set up in, and it was apparent they'd done the off, and the area just now seemed devoid. I fancied a move to a prominent point area that gave access to the mouth of the shallows and covered some exciting looking spots I'd seen earlier from the boat. As I barrowed past, Marcus had been stalking some carp in the weed bed to the left of his swim. A shout from his direction had me jumping in the boat to go to his rescue. He'd hooked a carp and it had plugged him up in the weed. He just literally dived in and it's just gone buried himself, hasn't he? Things weren't looking good, and the carp had battled itself to a deadlock in the weed. Marcus hopped aboard, aiming to get above the carp and gain a better angle on it. Hopefully he'll just stay calm. <laughs> Once afloat, he set about patiently stripping away the weed, hoping that the fish was still attached. Whoa! Despite it looking like the odds were stacked against him, he soon felt a kick as the carp surged through the weed. <laughs> now, it seemed, the game was back on. Most of it was just peeing off, if I just do what I did before. <laughs> Didn't you have just go? It's like a jungle man out here, isn't it? The thing is, if it goes again, I'm just going to have to let it go, but I can't let it too much because I don't want it going in those snags. So I'll just be game over. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right there. The afternoon sun beat down and it really did seem like the battle could go either way. But it was actually about to take a turn for the worse. Oh, oh. Things I can't get in the Yeah, it's in the snag. I couldn't do anything because the boat's just drifting away, isn't it? And, or he's drifting. going though, isn't he? Yeah, he's in there. He's going to cut me off in him any second. This is the worst possible place you want to be in it. Wait, he's coming. He's coming, Gaz. He's just there. Whoa. I think he's a good one. I know, that's why I don't want him going in there. Holy <laughs> Don't go in there. Oh. oh, he's gone, mate. It's a chunk, that scaly chunk. With the unstoppable fish having charged through yards of snags, it seemed inevitable the battle would surely be lost. That was until cameraman Dan stepped in to help tentatively start to trace and unpick the line from the branches. Right, what's this here? Yeah, I'm actually out of the snag. 
Yeah. Okay. Is my nut free? That's there. There he is, him. Is his tail? He's there. You see him? That's his face. Got him! Right. <laughs> Over wire first? Yeah, yeah. can do. <laughs> 32 dead. 30, yeah, 32. Yeah, yeah. 32. Mega cart man. You love these type of cart, don't you? With the heads and stuff. It was indeed a magnificent fish, and what a prize for the first one from the lake. Unbelievable, really. Unbelievable to get it in. Um, also unbelievable uh, to have caught one of the biggest ones in here um, on a bit of bread as well. Amazing display of angling and um, yeah, just an amazing, uh, amazing fight. Certainly one of the maddest fights um, that, that, yeah, that I've ever had the, the pleasure to be a part of. Yeah, amazing stuff. Yes! <laughs> that was unreal. <laughs> Absolutely made up. Unreal fight. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Mental. Marcus's epic battle meant that by the time the shots and congratulations were wrapped up, it was evening before I was back in my swim to prepare the rods for the night ahead. Having the boat meant that rather than letting around to find a clear area, I could make the most of the fading light to precisely place my rigs on some sweet little clear spots amongst the forests of weed. Marcus had found and baited a lovely clear area within a comfortable casting range and set about deploying a couple of his trusty Amnesia Ds out to the zone. After the buzz of the afternoon capture, confidence was high for the night ahead. So, uh, sadly, it was a bit of an anticlimactic night, really. Um, I moved yesterday uh, into this new spot, and um, the fish, by the look of it, had smashed a spot out here. There's loads of fizzing, a few shows and stuff in the air. It looked really good. So, moved into here yesterday afternoon, um, found a beautiful plum spot. You could see the areas that they'd fed on, where they'd cleaned bits of the silt back to gravel and that. It looked absolutely perfect. Um, so, got it blocked up. Um, 
got a rig on there, lowered it down beautifully, watched it lay out on the bottom, boat over the top, couldn't have been set more perfect, super happy. Um, found a second spot as well, um, not too far away, that, that looked just as plum as well. Um, so yeah, it was full of anticipation really for the night. Um, had a few liners through the evening, it was, it was looking really good. Um, but after about 11 o'clock, liners stopped and um, literally haven't kind of really seen or heard anything of them since. So I don't know, conditions were really quite different this morning. It was, it was flat, calm, clear. Um, first thing I saw when I woke up at 6 a.m. as well was, um, was a couple kind of bow waving through the shallower areas over there as well. So I just kind of feel like maybe the conditions just didn't fall favorably um, this morning for them, to, for them to feed. So probably go out in the boat, I think this afternoon, have a little look, um, see if the bait has been touched. Uh, if it has, then you know maybe they just didn't feed heavy enough um, for me to get a bite. Or um, if it hasn't been touched, then then maybe when the conditions come in, because it's due to rain tonight and tomorrow morning, so it should be looking plum again tomorrow morning. So fingers crossed. Um, I think I'm probably just going to sit tight and uh, hope they get on the bait tomorrow. Whilst it's been quiet for me, um, I've just had a text from Marcus to say that he's got a, a pretty little scaly one in the bag. So um, I'm just gonna make this coffee and head up there and have a little look to see what he's got. Awesome carp, man, isn't it? Yeah, probably just before first light, I get this absolute take from hell, <laughs> basically. Um, it, it was just motoring off one of them where you just just scared, you know, you know, when you it just wakes you up and you you just like, oh my god, what's going on? Um, and I obviously ran down, and it was my long spot actually, where I just put the single on. I didn't put no more bait around it. Um, picked up the rod, and it just, it was just taking line, um, just stripping loads of line off me for ages. Proper angry carp, you know. Um, I'm guessing where it is, quite a shallow lake. Obviously, they haven't got that depth to sort of dive down. They just, all, they, all they're going to do is just run. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I, I managed to um, stop him and, it, he took, and then he, after that he came in quite easily really, um, just kited off to the left. And yeah, I thought this weed actually in front of me was going to be a bit of a problem, but obviously where I've dropped my leads, he, he just came in really, really easily. Um, yeah, and it turned out to be a lovely, fully scaled, little fully scaled mirror. Um, beautiful carp. Um, yeah, really, really made up with him. So, so yeah, I'm going to um, check the spots out in a bit. You know, there's still a bit of activity out there, a few fish out there, so I leave the wads in for the moment and then, um, yeah, check them later on and see how much bait they've, they've taken off that long spot, actually. Um, yeah, and then get them sorted out for, uh, for tonight. So, just, uh, just been sitting over in my plot from last night. Um, just debating, wondering what on earth to do because it was looking um, it was looking pretty dead out there to be honest. And uh, just seeing um, a couple of shows and a few big sheets of fizz come up just off the tip of this snag, which is um, a spot scoped out yesterday and put a little bit of bait on, um, just as a bit of a backup plan. So it looks like they've um, looks like they found it, which is a good sign. So um, just wound in, uh, just stuck a fresh bait on. I'm just going to. Um, Put one out over here for a couple of hours. Um, I don't want to use the boat. I'm going to be casting. I've still got my four and a halves on from last night. So I'm just going to stick a slightly smaller lead on. Flick it out, hopefully just a couple of casts. And I can see there's a few little bits of fizz still coming up now, just peppering the, the spot. So it does look good. 
Um, if I can get a rig in, I think fairly quietly, I feel like I might have might have half a chance of a quick bite possibly. But either way, I think it's got to be a better option than just um, sitting out there over the spots from from last night. I can always go back to them later if if nothing happens here. But got to make the most of little opportunities like this. I've caught a few in the past on places just from little half chances. Um, I think you just got to have a go. the one. Probably needed to be here a few hours ago really. Just like those elusive carp, which once again had taken up residence in Marcus's big weed bed. My chance seems to have melted away in the scorching summer sun. It wasn't long before I was skipping the rig back in and heading back round to my plot to have a rethink. Birds that have me as well. Being yet to chalk up a bite, I was super keen to get the rods positioned on exactly the right spots for the night ahead. So I roped Marcus in to help me manoeuvre the boat around to pinpoint those little freshly polished areas once again. Happy that I was fishing the best areas out in front of me that I possibly could be, I set about fine tuning my rigs and balancing up a hook bait. Confident as ever, Marcus set about preparing for the night ahead too. However for him, things were a little clearer as all he had to do was replicate the scenario from the night before. After what had been an interesting night, the day dawned wet and windy, just about as carpy a set of conditions as you could possibly wish for. I was just getting the rod sorted, ready to reach up for the day, when a neville sounded in the distance. Marcus was in again. Oi, oi, oi. Two nets not enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, it's been carnage. Um, it's yeah, 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 he's right here now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, get in there. What am I? Absolute carnage. On, mate, let's celebrate your coffee. Cheers, man. Yeah. <laughs> Carnage. Mate, so uh, yeah, talk me through it then. What's happened? You've um, had three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, 
got the rods out last night. I only put two out in the end, just on the, the long spot. Okay. Uh, oh, what? So you moved your left hander from yeah, the other spot? Yeah, I didn't bother with didn't that didn't fancy one. it? Or? No. No? Just, I, for some, I don't know. I just didn't feel it, you know? Um, especially when I had the bite the night before from the from the longer side, and I thought I'd put two on it. I see you out in the boat having a look. Could you see any bait left there or anything? Or There was a few bait still on the spot. Yeah. About 20 odd or so. Oh, okay. Um, boilies and that. Right. But, um, Apart from that, it actually looked a lot cleaner than the yeah. day before. So, and also I did catch one off here yesterday morning. So, yeah. Um, How much did you put out then? Uh, I didn't put loads. A couple of handfuls of like right. uh, some like particle and that, and then yeah. um, I, I don't know half a key or bully or something. So you did put a bit. Of I put a, yeah. But not loads, you know, you get carried away when you're out in a boat, don't yeah, you? you yeah, can yeah. Tip five kilos. Too easily <laughs> fill it in, yeah, yeah, definitely. But I suppose, I mean, I, I must admit, I did put a little bit more out last night just because I knew this weather was coming in. Mm. Um, mm. I did feel like they were going to have a, a bit of a trough last night or this yeah. morning, um, yeah. which they have done, haven't they? Well, you had one as well, didn't you? I know, mate. Um, <laughs> I know All I can remember is you coming in last night with a beam in your head torch in my eyes. I'm just, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> you started asking me some random questions about where I was set up. I was like, I'm still set up in the same place I was an hour ago. <laughs> but you'd, you'd obviously just crashed out and we're, we're just completely oh, sparko. But um, yeah. yeah, mate, so, uh, a bit of an odd one though, really, uh, being the same one that you'd caught the day before. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Imagine, I mean, it's an incredible fish. Obviously, I'm, yeah. you know, absolutely buzzing to catch it. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, I was thinking about it this morning though. I mean, really, it's a prime moon phase at the moment. So mm -hmm. really good time for catching a big one. Yeah. Off the bat. And I think, Obviously, where your capture was off the top. Well, I just literally just I think just a bit of bread burn it just yeah. on top of its nose, and he took yeah. it. So, you know, the hungry carp at the end of the day, and he's going to want to feed. And exactly, yeah. And and I I think I think probably the reality is that you know he didn't necessarily associate what had happened yesterday because mm -hmm. he'd been caught off the top with with eating bait. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but yeah, when I see it in the torchlight because it, it picked up my other rod, I had mm. a tench at last light. Um, I got the rods out. Um, I got the rods out sweet. The spot looked like it had been cleaned as well from the night before. Yeah. Um, you know, it was all looking good. And then Tench wiped me out just before dark. Um, took my other rod out as well because the line lay is so poor into it. Um, Nightmare. It took the other rod out. Thankfully, just managed to get them both back out. Um, I had one on the gravel that had been cleaned, the left hand rod, and I put my right hand rod ever so slightly longer and slightly to the right. It was mm. just um, it was still hard, but it was just not a tang of gravel. It was just slightly softer, yeah. um, just into that silt that we yeah. saw from the boat, yeah. and um, sort of just off the bait actually as well. That was the rod I had tench on, and then um, it must have been about half twelve, one a.m. or something like that. It's just ramped off, <laughs> and um, it, it actually it actually came over the other rod, and I thought I was going to get it in without it picking the other one up, but it picked it up. I oh, say so it wiped up the other rod. Yeah, it wiped out the other rod, mauled that up as well. So I had to put my torch on, um, and because of the weed and that. And uh, thankfully, it just wallowed in over the top of the weed. But I could see it was like a big mirror in the <laughs> torchlight. I was like, oh god, it's a, it must be one of the other real yeah. big ones. Yeah. And I've scooped it up, and um, like for a second, my heart sunk. I was like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it's the <laughs> same one. But then, you know, once that had subsided, I was like, it's amazing. You know, yeah. like I can't believe we both caught the big one. It's a cool carp, mate. I think it's, it's a mega carp. Yeah. You know, it's. By five it, do you know what I mean? In, in, in two different situations as well. Yeah, yeah. I've just, yeah, nah, it's wicked, mate. <laughs> I'm buzzing for you. <laughs> so, yeah, my, I don't think, um, I don't think it's happening on that spot of mine though. I think maybe I just picked that one up off the edge of the spot. Um, the birds yeah, came over yeah. first light and were diving on me and picking the bait up and that. So, I don't know. It, it wasn't looking too good. But um, mm. that spot where I um, put that bait off that snag yeah. tree yesterday, seen a couple show on that this morning. So. Um, I think once we've photographed your fish, yeah. I'm going to wrap, wrap up again and uh, yeah, shift around there on. and maybe yeah. see if I can try and nick one out of there tonight. It feels like the best option, I think, maybe. Yeah, but, yeah definitely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, mate, would you reckon drink these coffees and then have a look at them? I reckon so, definitely, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Marcus had really got the area rocking now and it seemed only a matter of time before another bite was on the cards for him. For me, it looked like another move was the only option though. Well done, mate. He's a beautiful little fella, isn't he? Cool, cool little fella. Yeah. Pack old mouth in him. 
Photographing those scaly corkers for Marcus had really inspired me and strengthened my resolve to see a couple more in my own net. Judging from the lovely ones Marcus had caught, it was becoming clear the lake held a really diverse stock of carp in different strains, the sort of angling we all love. Not knowing what the next bite could bring, long and lean or deep and scaly. Without a doubt, the pick of Marcus's morning bag was a chestnut brown fully scaled. A true character and one we were both buzzing to have seen on the bank. If we thought that was to be the end of the morning spell, we'd have been mistaken as just after the last of Marcus's trio had been returned, his one remaining rod ramped off again. That was a savage first run, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, mate. That was it's it. done you for like 30, 40 yards, at least. They've, uh, yeah, they've all been like that. He just looks slow, he just looks quite slow and heavy to me. He's, he's that first a lot run was slower than was the other. pretty others. quick, it just looks a bit um, more ponderous. Could you imagine if it was that linear again? <laughs> That would be, uh, is that him there on the surface? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, let me get your waders on. He's, uh, cool. He's definitely Marcus size, not G size, aren't they? They're not even my size. I've got a couple sizes too big, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You see him boiling on the surface there? Yeah. That's awesome, look at his tail going, he's trying to get in the weed. Well, he is in the weed, but... Good job I like playing gilly for you, innit? Get to do it often enough. Nice looking mirror. Can you walk, can you just walk back? Once his head's up, maybe. Wow. I can't even see where he's... He's under that lot, isn't he, now? Any trunk, can you walk out further or not? No. Or is it too, it's too deep, mate? I can't, see, I can't see where he is, though. I think he's just right underneath it, but... I don't know if that's him there or not. Can you see him? Yeah, he's in. Slightly <laughs> on <unsound, obviously. laughs> but he's in. Classic Marcus on the car bar. <laughs> Just jammy, mate. Jammy. Nice netting skills, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right, what do you want to do? Bring get him straight out, or? Cup of tea? <laughs> nah, 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 we'll, um, we'll sort them out. I'd quite like to go get set up, I think, as well. Yeah, totally. Mate. Marcus's mirror was every bit as characterful as the others, with little scalloped pecs and a unique paintbrush tail. What a cool character.
There she goes. Fishing with Marcus is, uh, is, is, is always a real treat. Um, last couple of years, like sadly, we've kind of, well not sadly, just the way things go, but we've ended up kind of uh, fishing on, on, you know, on different waters. Um, just spent a good few years uh, sort of fishing in Ringwood together, um, you know, which was, um, which was ace. Uh, so, but yeah, last few years, I haven't really spent a lot of time fishing with him. So yeah, it's been, um, yeah, it's been great. You know, it's always something I really look forward to. Generally these days, uh, it's just a couple of European trips that we have, the little road trips, like to Belgium or Germany this year. Um, you know, it's always really look forward to them. So yeah, it's been um, yeah, it's been a real treat. Um, apart from the fact that he doesn't really bring any supplies and he's always really disorganised. Uh, yeah, it's all good. And he always teaches me a few things about how to catch carp as well. So that's always bonus too. With the wind whipping up, I was on the move too, back to the bank that I'd started on, and onto the areas I've been baiting for the last few days. Marcus and I jumped in the boat to get the long rods dropped onto a prospective new area I'd seen a few show in that morning. The other rod was a given, just over the back of a little gravel hump took right up tight against the snaggy tree line and just nicely in the lee of the wind. I trickled a bit of bait in each day and my hopes now rested squarely on it for my last night. It was last light before Marcus baited his area setting his traps with his ever consistent precision and accuracy. So it's been a busy old day today. Um, Marcus, um, Marcus managed to uh, to catch four this morning. Um, it did look really, really good for it. We were sitting there yesterday evening. Um, we had a big Indian takeaway and uh, lovely little social and things. And um, the rods have gone out perfect. And obviously we've been checking the forecast during the week and knew there was a big weather front coming in and we we're due to get a big drop of rain during the night. And um, held off until about midnight I think it was 1am something like that in the end um, but um, it looked really it was so mild it just felt absolutely perfect for it and um, yeah sure enough um, they, they, they did turn up on on that spot of Marcus's um, yeah obviously fished really well and um, yeah managed to take four beautiful fish off it this morning um, amazing common beautiful character mirror sadly a little bit less exciting uh, in my swim did catch that big one during the night, um, which was amazing. Slightly strange capture, sort of because of the circumstances, but um, you know, huge buzz to catch such a lovely one. And um, yeah, got some got some really nice flash shots of it, and uh, and, and slipped her straight back. I wasn't sure that all the bait had gone. I, I didn't think it had, and um, the birds were diving, was kind of diving pretty relentlessly on it this morning. So I figured there was obviously still quite a bit out there, and don't know. It just didn't. Obviously, I had caught one, but it just didn't really sort of feel right. Um, and then as we were photographing some of Marcus's this morning, I was kind of around there, um, I saw three uh, jump off the, um, off the snag that I'd baited uh, yesterday and the previous day as well. Haven't fished it yet, so it's the last night. Um, you know, really want to try and catch another one um, or two. That would be lovely. And uh, yeah, that, that, that felt like the kind of the best spot for a chance really. So it's had a few days of bait now, hasn't seen a line yet. Um, we've got a rig dropped in there perfectly and got another couple out on, on a couple of different spots as well. So sort of hedging my bets in, in a couple of different areas tonight. Um, I think I've done as much as I possibly can. And um, yeah, if I don't catch any, hopefully Marcus will pull another couple out of the bag tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll get to see a few more tomorrow.
Our final morning on the secret lake dawned clear and bright. And what's more, we both caught. So Marcus stuck the kettle on before we set about admiring our prizes. I'd banked two lovely commons and Marcus had added another pristine little one to his tally. However, little did we know the action wasn't quite over and before we'd finished photographing mine, Marcus was away once again. Whoa. Is that weed or is he going? Oh, no, he's in weed. Oh, is he? Yeah. He's, he's just... The bolt of that land just kited left. It's the first one that's really weeded me up, isn't it? Not properly out there. Come out. Yeah. Sweet. It's just kiting left. There he is. What do you reckon? Last morning? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last morning whacker. Better set the net up, really. <clears throat> Um, nets everywhere, mate. You've just been catching too many, mate. In hindsight, you know, really think we should have scissor paper uh, stone for this swim? Should have got down here in the morning, <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> you should have got down here early enough. <laughs> so ungentlemanly. It's just not like you. <laughs> Snooze you lose, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're cutting that out. <laughs> it's a little scant, mate. Come on. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Should have squidded you. Should have done. Look at him. There's some more scales with him, isn't he? Yeah. He's mega colours as well. He's a wicked little mirror, isn't he? Cool, calm. Beautiful little scales on him. That's a, yeah, he looks lovely, mate. Really nice. Backdrop looks beautiful too. Just uh, the tail up a fraction, mate. Right. Oh. He's gonna go easy. He's gone. <laughs> well done, mate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what do you reckon then? Get uh, these two commons shot. Yeah. Then get yeah. wrapped up and uh, go to the pub for a beer. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds great to me. Celebrate right, your so. beer. Well done, mate. Let's do it. Yeah, mate. Yeah, um, Beautiful, eh? Come <laughs> <laughs> on, get your dorsal up. <laughs> mate, what a lovely, lovely pair of commons to end on, eh? Yeah, mate, yeah. Lovely old morning. Beautiful carp. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they've all been mega characters, haven't they, though? Yeah. Got a couple of little bullet holes in his dorsal, this one, that mirror yesterday the with little the little tail, brush, right? and yeah. just been absolutely mega, mate. As usual, you fished the pants off me, show me how to do it. <laughs> no, I've just got lucky, mate. I'm always going to hang on to the fact that you had the best swim. <laughs> uh, Make myself feel a little bit better about excuses, it. Excuses, excuses, but yeah. Well, yeah, man. <laughs> get these back, get wrapped up, and um, chip down the pub for a point, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, definitely, mate. Awesome. <laughs> Lovely times. <laughs> Wicked.